Section forty three of Wheels, the Fourth Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Bibliography Wheels, first volume, nineteen sixteen, published by B. H. Blackwell. Conceived in morbid eccentricity and executed in fierce, factitious gloom. Paul Moore Gazette. We have no doubt whatever that fifty years hence the publication of Wheels will be remembered as a notable event in the inner history of English literature. Morning Post. Aldous Huxley, The Burning Wheel, published by B. H. Blackwell. Without any doubt, an original poet. The Nation. Edith Sitwell, The Mother and Other Poems, published by B. H. Blackwell. In all these poems, one thing is clear. They come from within. Miss Sitwell does not describe, she lives in her verse. This very little, therefore, points a long way. The Times Edith and Osbert Sitwell, 20th Century Harlequinade Published by B. H. Blackwell Every pretty woman carries a vanity bag into which she puts all her most cherished possessions, from a passionate letter from Flanders, to a dinky little pink stick of lip salve. When writers of verses are happy enough to collar publishers, they put all the most precious possessions of their hearts into their books, which are vanity bags. This vanity bag is not so pretty. The New Witness Osbert Sitwell's Tremendous Babel The Morning Post E. Wyndham Tennant Warple Flit and Other Poems Published by B. H. Blackwell Mr. Tennant has an unclouded vision and the blessed gift of direct speech. The Glasgow Herald Iris Tree Poems Privately Printed Sherard Vines The Two Worlds Published by B. H. Blackwell An extremely vivid and charming poet. The Nation Sir Cheverell Sitwell the People's Palace. This is the most advanced poetry we have had so far, advanced in that it is founded on a theory probably new to this country. Robert Nichols in The New Witness. We have attributed more to Mr. Sitwell than to any poet of quite his generation. We require of him only ten years of toil. T. S. Eliot in The Egoist. The Mayor of Mercia is almost unreadable for dullness. Jones, Miss Topsy, in A or The Common Cause. The word dire shows real observation and imagination. It illuminates. It is the word one might have thought of and didn't. Jones, Miss, in A or The Common Cause. Editor's Note. Hoity-toity, Topsy Jones. Our Stylists. The People's Palace purports to be a collection of verse by Sir Cheverell Sitwell. Its sheer inanity is beyond description. The audacity of wasting precious paper, to say nothing of printing ink, on such unadulterated drivel, take, sick, one's breath away. The World Editor's Note A society paper, I believe. Exhibits all the characteristic traits of Mr. Sitwell's rhyming, to wit, a rather tortuous and alembicated diction, profusely interspersed with an intricate preciosity of imagery, and far-fetched ideas clothed in elaborate language. The Aberdeen Daily Journal Aldous Huxley, The Defeat of Youth, published by B. H. Blackwell The best thing in Mr. Huxley's new volume is The Defeat of Youth, the later poems in the book belong to his subjective eccentric period, wherein lies are notable epigrammatists. Love songs are hardly in Mr. Huxley's line, and when they do occur, it sounds like the love gambles of the blob. The Nation Mr. Huxley is a poet whom it is as difficult to praise outright as it is to overlook him altogether. Exceedingly good translation of La Prédie Midi d'un Faun. Almost all the reviewers like this translation. If Mr. Huxley could abandon his search for the rarer emotions for rareness' sake, 
and if he could be a little less ingenious, all round he would be a better poet. Land and Water Mr. Huxley's great merit is that he does not attempt to conceal his sophistication. His great defect is that the degree of his sophistication is rather overwhelming. His verse is truly elegant. Its rhythms are good. It is incisely phrased. It is devoid of clichés. It is often ironically witty and often originally and agreeably coloured. He is too self-conscious, too vividly aware that nearly everything has been done already. It would be possible to demonstrate his power to write beautifully and well from almost any page in his volume. The New Statesman Scholarly and Acceptable Verse The Literary World Mr. Huxley is a poet who focuses his mind without stint into verse, a process which has its dangers, but his mind is so richly stored and so quickly receptive that the result never lacks interest. It is clear that any idea or emotion that comes to him has the best possible chance of surviving beautifully. The Times Wit is the delightfully firm ground beneath all Mr. Huxley's poems. We feel that he knows where he is going, even when he goes with as little grace as a poodle on its hind legs in pursuit of a biscuit. The poems in which he seems to us to achieve keen beauty are The Elms, Inspiration, and Out of the Window, The Athenaeum. Admiral qualities of rhythm, diction, imagery, and frequently wit but the emotions of which these are the vehicles are frequently very tenuous and more subtle than profound. The Westminster Gazette His response and reaction to the appeal of loneliness, the significance of small contacts and idle feelings, the implications of daily life, are sure and instant. The Common Cause Edith Sitwell, Clowns' Houses, published by B. H. Blackwell Miss Sitwell's verses may remind some people of the Italian comedy seen through a distorting mirror. The Italian comedy is a little formula that will contain a very large bulk of life, and Miss Sitwell's performing matter has mind behind it. We convolute and spiralise, but somebody has hold of the strings. Her method has, to a certain extent, been a cockshy for the trumpery reviewer, but inasmuch as she does not use it either perversely or to exploit her personality, we rather admire her courage than deprecate the chosen vessel of its wrath. The Nation If by chance, which is not so improbable as appears, Miss Sitwell's teapot reminded her first of the Tower of London and then of Joan of Arc, she would say so without hesitation or consistency. For the most part, we believe that she is trying her best to be honest with her own conceptions, and that being so, she is, of course, perfectly right not to care whether they appear outlandish. The Times Literary Supplement She is a poet for whose poetry the taste must emphatically be acquired. What seemed like imaginative madness shows, on closer acquaintance, much method. The Oxford Chronicle Miss Sitwell can write fête galante and perverted nursery rhymes as well as any poet alive. New Statesman Fire is Miss Sitwell's element. Every man. Miss Sitwell is best and most herself when she dances a gracefully grotesque pas seul of absurdities, using rhyme, as Monsieur Duhamel puts it, pour taper du ton long les pas d'une petite danse qui ont l'accabord, and pour naître des talons rouges dans une fête galante. The Saturday Westminster Gazette Miss Sitwell is in danger of being, as they say in the nursery, too clever by half. Her particular gift is for the making of a kind of nonsense rhyme that is as gay and pretty and inconsequent as the lights of a fair. The world, as she describes it, indeed, is more like a flower show in a gale, or a circus when the tent pole breaks, a big haphazard pitching and tossing of marquees, than part of a mathematically punctual universe. The Athenaeum Her whole book has in it 
a nightmare quality of ugliness. We wonder what is Miss Sitwell's conception of the true function of poetry. Cambridge Review Note The editor of Wheels is always pleased to answer any question as courteously put as the above. Miss Sitwell's conception of the true function of poetry is the same. Little Arthur has her conception of the true function of space, eternity, the will to be, the daily mail, or any other eternal verity. End of section. End of Wheels, the Fourth Cycle. Recording by Eva Davis, Nemo, Ian King, Newgate Novelist, and Algie Pug.